Hi everyone. So this should be a slightly shorter video. Um, I tend to think that a lot and then they tend to come out longer than I intended, but I, I do think today's video will be on the shorter side because um, basically all I wanna do is look at another kind of example um, that we can do with these formulas, the addition and subtraction formulas. And then we'll also use these formulas to come up with a couple of new formulas. So there's there's a, two different formulas called the double angle formulas. And so those are gonna come directly from these angle addition formulas. So we'll learn that new uh, rule and then um, do some examples with that as well. But first I just wanted to, to do one more kind of example. And so there's a couple of questions like this on the online homework this week. Um, so yesterday's video, we were doing things like this, right? We were doing stuff like sine of 75 and we would split it up into 45 and 30 and then kind of go from there to get an exact expression for, um, for sine of 75. So what we're doing today is gonna to be completely different because we're not gonna be looking at examples where we actually know the angles. Instead, we're gonna be doing examples where you don't actually know what the two angles are, but you can still put together the information that's given to answer the question. So sorry, that was probably kind of vague, but we'll, you'll see in a second. Okay, so first example. Um, so in this example, we are looking at two angles, A and B. Um, so these are two angles, specifically A is in quadrant three and B is in quadrant four. And specifically, these are angles such that um, sine of A is equal to, sorry, negative three over five. And um, sine, or no, sorry, cosine of B is equal to um, two thirds. And so the question that we wanna answer here is we want to find sine of A plus B and let's do cosine of A minus B. So one thing I just wanna make clear in this question is that we never need to find A and B. So you, you could find them using inverse trig, but you'd have to be a little bit clever because of the, the quadrants they are in. So the point of this question is not to, to solve for A and B. The point is basically to use these formulas and kind of figure out what information do we have and what's missing and find the missing information in order to, um, to, to find the final answer. So let's start with sine of A plus B. But really the, the information we need is gonna be the same for both of them. So if we look at the, the formula for sine of A plus B, Notice that we need to know sine of A, cosine of B, cosine of A, sine of B. So we basically need to know both sine and cosine of both angles. And that's gonna be true for cosine of A minus B as well. So we need to know cosine of A, sine of A, cosine of B, sine of B. We need to know all of that. So if we look at the information that's given, we have sine of A and cosine of B, but we don't have sine of B or cosine of A. So Let's write that down. Like, what are, what are we looking for here? Um, we need to find um, sine, or let me put it in this order. Let's say cosine of A and sine of B. Because once we have cosine of A and sine of B, then we'll have all of the information we need to use the formulas above. So this is actually going back to uh, you know this question itself. If I just asked you to find cosine of A and sine of B, this is a question that you could have answered probably like a couple of weeks ago. So if you're given information, so let's, let's start with finding cosine of A. So let's start with angle A. So if you're given information about what sine of A is equal to, you can find cosine of A using either the unit circle equation or the Pythagorean identity. So Let's make a quick sketch here. 
So it doesn't need to be perfect because we don't really care exactly what A is, we just want like a reference for what's positive and what's negative. So we know that angle A is in quadrant three and the sine of angle A is supposed to be negative three fifths. So I'm just gonna kind of pick an angle here and let's, let's say that this is angle A. So we know that the, um, because we know that sine of A is negative th three fifths, we don't know what the X coordinate is, but we do know that the Y coordinate is negative three fifths. So how can we find the X coordinate? Well, we can just use the unit circle equation. So we can just say x squared plus negative 3 fifths squared is equal to 1. And again, that, that would be equivalent to using the Pythagorean identity because Pythagorean identity would say cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. They're, they're really the same thing. So we get x squared plus 9 over 25 is equal to, and then let's write 1 as 25 over 25. So now we get x squared is equal to 16 over 25. And so if we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus 4 over 5. And in this case, if we look at what is, you know, should the x coordinate be positive or negative, we can see that it's negative, and that's because we're in quadrant 3. So that tells us that um, cosine of a is equal to negative 4 over 5. Okay, so now we know cosine of A. Now we just need to find sine of B. So maybe I'll switch up my color for this one. So to find sine of B, so now we have, um, so let's, let's look at what, what information is given. So we know that cosine of B is equal to 2 thirds, and we know that angle B is in quadrant 4. So that means that we want to draw an angle in quadrant four that has an x coordinate of two thirds. So maybe something like this. So this would be our angle B. And um, this point, we know that the x coordinate is two thirds. We don't know the y coordinate. So again, we can just use the unit circle equation. So in this case, we have two thirds squared plus y squared is equal to one. So we get four over nine plus y squared is equal to, and we can write one as nine over nine. So we get y squared is equal to five over nine, if we subtract four over nine from both sides. And so then if we take the square root of both sides, we get y is equal to plus or minus square root of five over three. Right, because the square root of nine reduces to three, but the square root of five can't be simplified. And again, it's gonna be negative, and this time it's because we're in quadrant four, and in quadrant four, um, the y coordinates are negative, just looking at the picture. And so now we know that um, sine of b, because that's the y coordinate, is equal to negative square root of five over three. Okay, so now that we have all this information, let's, let's write it down kind of in one place. So now we know that, um, so let's look at what we, we started with here. We started with the fact that sine of A was negative three-fifths. So we now know that cosine of A was equal to negative four-fifths. Um, we were given that cosine of B was equal to two thirds. And now we just found out that sine of B is equal to negative square root of five over three. So now to answer the question that was asked of us, we just need to kind of put these pieces together in the right way. So the first thing that was asked was to find sine of A plus B. So looking back at our formulas, sine of A plus B is you basically blend together sine of A, cosine of B, plus cosine of A, sine of B. So we just need to put these together in the right way. So we start with sine of A, which is negative three-fifths. Um, then we multiply that with cosine of B, which is two-thirds. And then to that we add um, cosine of A, which was negative four-fifths. 
and then we multiply that with sine of b. Did I say the right thing? So we did, yes, that's all that's missing. So we multiply that with sine of b, which is negative square root of five over, I don't know where that four came from, three. So when we put these all together, we end up with negative six over 15. Um, and then here we have two negatives which become a positive. So this becomes plus four times the square root of five over 15. And so altogether we can write this as negative six plus four root five over 15. So that is sine of a plus b. Now to find cosine of a minus b, so how does that work? We're supposed to, for cosine, you kind of put the, the same functions together, right? So you do cosine of a times cosine of b. In the addition formula, you're subtracting. So in the subtraction, subtraction formula, you're actually adding. So we're gonna do cosine of a times cosine of b. plus sine of a times sine of b. So now again, we just have to put all these little pieces together that we wrote down up here. So cosine of a is negative four over five. Cosine of b is two thirds. Sine of a is negative three over five. And sine of b is negative square root of five over three. So putting this together, we get negative eight. Oops, negative eight. Um, again, this becomes plus, and let me, I was about to skip a step, so let me write a little more detail here. So negative eight over 15, and then here we get plus three root five over 15. So we can put these together as negative eight plus three root five divided by 15. Okay, so next thing is that we're gonna derive some new formulas that are called the double angle formulas. So this is now gonna be in section, sorry, not two, 7.3 in your book. So in tomorrow's video, we'll learn about something called the half angle formulas. So for now, we're just talking about the double angle formulas. So basically what we're gonna do here, and let me, I'm gonna get rid of the subtraction ones because we don't need those. Um, so what we're gonna do is, is come up with some equations that are basically just like a special version, a special case of the, um, the addition formulas. So let's say that instead of taking sine of two different angles added together, you were taking sine of the same angle added to itself. So that would be something that you could then write as sine of two times a or two times theta instead of saying a plus b. So let's write that out. So these are the angle addition formulas, but the new formulas we can now come up with would be if we wanted to do sine of two times theta. So what would that look like? Well, it would look like basically doing this exact same equation, except for instead of putting in a and b and a and b, we're gonna put theta everywhere, right? Because theta is, two times theta is the same thing as theta plus theta. So what is that formula gonna look like? It's gonna be sine of theta times cosine of theta. Um, plus cosine of theta times sine of theta. So if you notice, because we have now just the same angle twice, instead of having two different angles, we can actually combine these two parts because they're the same, right? We have sine of theta times cosine of theta, and then we have cosine of theta times sine of theta, and those are the same. So we can rewrite this as two times um, sine of theta times cosine of theta. So that is the double angle formula for, um, for sine. So let me just write that here. Sine of two theta 
is equal to two times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So this, like, like we just saw, this actually just comes directly from the, um, the angle addition formula. However, in some ways it actually is more important than the angle addition formula. So in calculus two, you'll probably see things involving the double angle formulas more often than you'll see the, um, the angle addition formulas. So personally, I would say, you know, for the sake of this class, yeah, you probably want to, you know, memorize all of these basically. And, you know, if you memorize these two, then it's pretty easy to, to come across the double angle formula using those. But in future classes, you'll probably want to have this one kind of at the top of your mind because it, it will definitely come up in calculus two. So similarly, if we wanted to do um, cosine of two theta, Well, we could rewrite that as cosine of theta plus theta and use the cosine addition formula. So that would give us um, cosine of theta times cosine of theta minus, right? So the angle addition formula for cosine has minus, and then we have sine of theta times sine of theta. So again, because it's the same angle being plugged in twice, it will allow us to simplify it in a way that you cannot for the, um, for the angle addition formula. So when you have cosine times cosine, another way of writing that is cosine squared of theta. And then when you have sine times sine, another way of writing that is sine squared. Of theta. And so this is what's called the double angle formula for cosine. So again, these come directly from the angle addition formula. So you don't really need to, I don't want, I think at this point in the quarter, a lot of people, and maybe less so because it's a, an at home class, but people get start to get a little freaked out about how many things they feel like they have to memorize. Um, I really try to make, to emphasize in my videos the way that things are connected and say, well, look, if you just memorize this, then you don't have to memorize this because it, you know, you can get it from this other thing. So again, this is a situation where you don't need to memorize all of these separately. I'd say if you know the, the two angle addition formulas, that will get you the subtraction formulas and that will get you the double angle formulas. So I would, for now, just focus on, on having these two committed to memory. But like I said, in the future, you probably will want to be like extra familiar with these double angle formulas. Okay, so I want to just do um, like one example or two slightly different examples from each other using the double angle formula. So the first example is going to be similar to the one that we just did. So suppose that um, secant of theta is equal to negative three halves. And um, suppose that theta is in, oops, is in quadrant two. So the question is then to find sine of two theta and um, cosine of two theta. Okay, so this is really similar to the example that we did a few minutes ago. There's one kind of complication, which is that we're not given sine or cosine. So we're not given what the x and y coordinate are on the unit circle. However, if we're told that secant of theta is three halves, that tells us that cosine of theta is the reciprocal, right? Secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other. So instead of thinking of it as secant being negative three halves, let's think of it as cosine being negative two thirds. So we want an angle in quadrant two that has a, an x coordinate of negative two thirds. So I'm just gonna draw something here. So this is our angle theta. So we know that the x coordinate is negative two thirds and we wanna find the y coordinate. So this is actually gonna be um, similar to, to the one that we just did in terms of the numbers because it's two thirds again. But if we write this out, so negative two thirds squared plus y squared is equal to one, 
we get 4 over 9 plus y squared is equal to 9 over 9. We can subtract 4 ninths from both sides and we get y squared is equal to 5 over 9. And so that tells us that y is equal to plus or minus square root of 5 over 9, or sorry, over 3. So again, looking at our picture, in this case, we can tell that the y coordinate is going to be positive, right, because we're in quadrant 2. Okay, so now we know that um, cosine, so we already knew that cosine of theta was negative 2 thirds, but now we know that sine of theta is equal to square root of 5 over 3. So now what do we need to do? We need to find um, sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. So we're going to make use of, of these two formulas here. So for sine of 2 theta, we're just going to do 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta, which in this case is going to be 2 times um, square root of 5 over 3. So just putting in our, our values that we found times negative 2 over 3. And so if we multiply these together, we're going to get um, negative 4 times the square root of 5 divided by 9. So that is the value of sine of 2 theta. And then if we want to find cosine of 2 theta, so that was the, the formula. So remember how cosine, if you look at the cosine addition formula, the cosines are together and the sines are together. And so that results in, in the double angle formula, the fact that you're squaring. So we have cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. So in this case, that's going to be, so if we take um, the cosine value, which was negative 2 thirds, and square that, and then from that we subtract square root of 5 over 3 and square that. So we're going to end up with 4 over 9 minus um, 5 over 9, right, because the... Um, the square root of 5 cancels out or cancels with itself and becomes 5, and so we're left with negative 1 over 9. All right, so one more uh, short example I just want to do of just kind of another thing that we can do with the double angle formula because the double angle formulas, again, they, they are important to know, but we can't really do that many examples. Like, for example, if I asked you to find sine of 120 degrees, you don't need to write it as 60 plus 60 or 2 times 60 because you already know how to find sine of 120. So there, there really aren't good opportunities the way there were with addition to calculate actual angles. Um, so you have to be kind of creative to come up with good questions involving the double angle formula. So the last example I want to look at is kind of going back to what we were doing earlier in the week. So um, I want to show that sine of x plus cosine of x squared um, simplifies to 1 plus sine of 2x. So we're basically doing simplification, but now kind of um, we have a goal in mind. So we're going to try to simplify it to get to this point. So how would you multiply something like this out so one thing that would not be valid here would be to say oh this is just equal to sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x so why isn't that valid well it's it's never true that a plus b squared 
is equal to a squared plus b squared, right? It doesn't work that way. What we need to do instead is foil it out, right? Or, or distribute and kind of multiply it with itself. So we want to multiply together sine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x plus cosine of x. So if we multiply these two things together, we get sine squared of x plus sine of x times cosine of x plus another sine of x times cosine of x plus cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. Okay, so let's combine what we can. So right, we have two sine of x times cosine of x's, and then I'm just gonna, to, to kind of be clever, I'm gonna move this cosine squared of x closer to the sine squared of x. So I'm gonna rewrite this as sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x plus two times sine of x times cosine of x. Okay, so now maybe we can see how our final answer, you know, where it's gonna come from. So where does it come from? Well, we know that the Pythagorean identity tells us that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. And then we just learned the double angle formula for sine. And let's scroll back to it because I don't expect you to necessarily have it committed to memory yet. So it was this one. So two times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So basically here we have the double angle formula. And so putting those two things together, we get one plus sine of two x. And that's exactly what we were supposed to come up with, right? We were supposed to show that it simplified to give us that. All right, so that is it for today's video. Um, and then in, so today's worksheet will probably be pretty short, because like I said, there just aren't that many questions that we can do with this stuff. Um, and then tomorrow's video, we'll learn a new formula. I know there's a lot of them, but um, also coming from these same formulas, so it's also kind of derived from, from these formulas that is called the half angle formula. All right, so I will see you next time.